Hello YouTube, I am Augie F, Rage is parked somewhere outside and this is the first of many Q&A sessions. Let's get this started. So here's how we're going to go about this. I'm going to be reading the question out from my phone over here and I'll also put up the question over there and you can then listen to my answer. Cool, let's start. So Moto Doctor says, Hello Ogief, where did you mount your camera on your helmet? Is it below the chin or on the chin? Because I mounted below the chin, but I am not getting the same view as yours. I am new to Moto Vlogging. Well, firstly Moto Doctor, welcome to the Moto Vlogging community. And secondly, if you want to know how I mounted my uh, GoPro on my helmet, I've made an instructional video about it. But to answer your question in short, it's placed right over here, facing forward. And I've used a J-mount, which gives me a bit of uh, an angle to adjust in case I want to be uh, changing the view on the uh, on the motorcycle. Now, understand that different motorcycles, since the seating position is a very different, uh, you might have an aggressive stance on an RC390 and a little more relaxed stance on probably, say, an FZ16. Um, you want to be able to adjust it accordingly, and, and that comes with a few trial and errors. Hope that answers your question. Simon Says Ride, Simon Says Ride asks me, are you the stick? Well, I'm not saying I am not the stick, but you haven't seen me and the stick at the same place together, have you? Hmm. Rev it Up says, would love to see Yamaha R15 again in your vlogs sometimes. Well, yeah, I, I sold the, the red torpedo uh, to get the RC390 and, and again, understand that I don't have a lot of parking space. I can't park two bikes where I live. So yeah, I had to make that sacrifice. But a few of my friends own a uh, Yamaha R15, so I'll see if I can get my hands on one of those. Okay, Young Rider has asked the next question, and he says, "How do you see motor vlogging in India after five years?" Well, that's a that's sort of an interview kind of question, to be honest. But um, I think we wouldn't really have to wait for five years to see a big change in the motor vlogging community. Um, there's quite a few motor vloggers from India who I've subscribed to. So it's just a matter of time till this really picks up and, and becomes the next big thing. I think it already is the next big thing, but just a matter of time, I guess. Um, I think there's no harm in taking a, a camera and mounting it on your helmet. If not for motor vlogging, it's at least good to keep a track of what's going on around you. So in case something happens and it's really not your fault, at least you have evidence. There's a lot of stupid bikers and drivers out there. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've watched some of my other videos and you know what I'm talking about. Um, Pratik Chavan asks, which is your favorite superbike? Well, I've said this before, I think it's the, the H2, the Ducati Desmosi Deci Double R, and the S1000 Double R as well. But if I'm looking at uh, practically using a motorcycle every day, then I'd probably pick a BMW 1200GS. Pranav's Gaming has asked the next question and he says uh, What inspired you to start biking videos? Um, what inspired me to start motor vlogging? Well, uh, I shared this in an interview I, which I recently did and I've uh, put links to that interview in the description of this video. Check that out, it'll answer most of your questions. But in a nutshell, my inspiration was uh, Royal Jordanian, Baron Von Grumble and uh, to some extent Adrian Nickelodeon as well. Okay, the next uh, answer is going to be for a question I think I've been asked in various forms. A lot of you have asked me what's the best bike to buy between a KTM Duke 200, an RC200, a CBR 250 and a whole lot of other bikes as well. To answer that plain and simple, uh, I'd ask you to look at mainly three things. First thing is, uh, what are you going to be using the bike for? Would you be touring? Would you be riding daily as, as in using it for your daily commutes? Uh, would you be planning on doing some sort of track days and stuff like that? Second is, uh, what is your budget? So how much are you willing to spend? And lastly, have you taken a test ride? Because I can tell you a lot of things, people can review bikes, give you all sorts of suggestions, but if you aren't happy with the bike at the end of the day, if you aren't comfortable with riding that motorcycle, then you've probably made the wrong decision. So go ahead, take a test ride first, see which one you like, and usually that, that test ride kind of determines the answer right away. So Rishikesh Patil asked me, how did your YouTube handle come to be? I'm guessing you want to know how I got the channel name to be Augie F. Um, to answer that, it's it's very close to my name. It's, it's pretty much what my friends and family call me. I'm known as Augie. 
to them. So, and I'm sure you can guess what the F stands for. But keep your minds out of the gutter. Anish Kulkarni asks, where did you get your blind spot removing mirrors from? Even if you tell the model name or something will do. Well, I got them off Flipkart and I shared it on my Facebook page recently. If you haven't liked my Facebook page yet, go ahead and check it out. The link is uh, in, in the timeline somewhere. I'll share that in, in this video as well. Okay, Ishu Rao asks me, Serious one, buddy, the same old question. Can the RC really do every day? Because what I have seen and I'm told by other bikers that the Duke 390 would do better, but I'm not actually a naked bike fan and I really, really do prefer the RC over the Duke in styling and agility. So please suggest as you have an RC390 and you know how it feels. Such as long, such a long question. Duke or RC for 390? But I think I answered this already issue. Take a test ride. If, you're, if you can live with the riding position on the RC, nothing like it. But in my opinion, I think, I can, I think it, it works perfectly as a daily uh, motorcycle and keeps you happy on the weekends as well. Codename ABK asks the next question. He says, here's a slightly uncommon question. If you had an option of riding your dream bike for 24 hours, all expenses included, or free fuel for the RC390 for one month, what would you pick and why? Um, well, I'd pick the um, all expenses paid superbike of my dreams for a day. Um, purely because I, I work as well. So I think I, I earn enough to be able to put fuel in my RC390 for a month. That wouldn't really hit my pocket that much, fortunately, at this point in time at least. Parag Chore, I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, uh, but he's asked me, what's, who is my favorite Indian YouTuber? Indian YouTuber? And again, I think someone else had asked this question, Indian YouTuber outside of motor vlogging. I watch a lot of uh, Carrie Minati, and that might be really strange to some of you because my Hindi is horrible, but I understand that guy. If you haven't watched any of his videos, go check him out. It's pretty awesome. Kari Manati. Amol Kashikar asks, I want to buy Yamaha YZF R125. How is that bike? Well, that bike is brilliant, but best of luck getting that in India because they don't sell it over here. And you'd probably have to pay a lot to get that imported if you're planning on doing that. Uh, next, uh, Himashant Mishra has asked, I just started recording some very amateur videos to start blogging. Can you suggest a series on how to make proper video and upload it to YouTube. P.S. I got the Ninja 300 Special Edition. Wow, that's a really nice bike. Um, well, here's the thing. So, while I encourage new motor bloggers to get out there and, and share their content, I don't want to kind of restrict your imagination. Uh, if you notice, each of us have our own style in motor vlogging, and some of us copy bits and pieces from the others. I know I copy stuff from, from some international motor vloggers, but it's important that you have your own style and your own flavor to your videos. I wouldn't want to kind of shadow that. I wouldn't want to uh, cloud your judgment, so to speak, when it comes to your own creativity. So I think it's better that you figure out what you want out of the channel and decide what you want to do with it and head in that direction. Um, if you want basic tutorials, I can put links in the description uh, for the software which I use, which I think will answer the, another question most of you have asked me. What is the software I use? I use Sony Vegas Pro. And there's another YouTuber, I can't get his name right now, but there's a YouTuber who I follow who shares very um, useful tips and tricks to how to edit using Sony Vegas Pro. And I'll put the link to his channel in the description as well. Aniruddha asks, can you please make a video about um, your riding gear and vlogging setup? Um, I think the camera setup, I've done a video on that already. My riding gear, I know that video has been pending for a while and I'll try and do that in, in the next month or two at least. If I don't, please forgive me. Keegan Lobo. Hey, Keegan. Okay, Keegan, we just met on the ground, I think, the other day. Uh, what's the feeling, uh, what's it like to be a motor vlogger? Um, to be honest with you, it's not that big a change to, to your life, and unless you make it really big. Um, I always, and that's why I always like it when people come up to me and, and say a hi and they recognize me by my helmet or my bike. So I, I think that's that's the, the brilliant part of it. But for me, I think what I really like about motor vlogging is that you get to meet so many new different people and interact with them. And when they tell you that they've watched your video, I think that makes it even more special. So yeah. That's what it feels like to be a motor vlogger for me at least. Amay Suki asks, will Augie F be doing Leh Ladakh ride in the future? 
um i wish i could but uh, i have a, a regular job as well during the weekdays and i don't know if my manager will be willing to give me that many leaves to go on that trip and come back considering how work has been um but yeah i think that's on the cards i don't know when i'll be doing it but i'm i'm sure i want to do it as well it will happen uh yash batra asks which will be your next bike any thoughts um so if i'm thinking practically then i'll probably pick something of uh, some kind of adventure tourer and looking at the options we have in india and the service centers and all of that taken into consideration as well i think a triumph would be the best alternative for me and uh, i think um, the triumph tiger i'm not sure if I'm, i'll take the 800 or the 1200 but i think the 800 itself is is enough power but yeah i think a triumph tiger would be the next most logical upgrade okay next question is from ashwini prakash um ashwini says hey my name is ashwini okay and my only question to you is why did you name your bike and i know its name is rage so where does this name come from my bike's name is sparky by the way oh nice that's a nice name sparky okay ashwini um i i feel a personal connection with the motorcycle and i think most people do uh you take care of it you maintain it and that would but it keeps it's like a relationship which you have to maintain with the bike so you might as well give a name to it right um i picked the name rage cuz while the rc390 is a brilliant bike it's not one of the calmest motorcycles when it comes to the way it performs and i think rage was a fitting name for it by the way say hi to sparky for me prajwal jadav says hi ogf i am one of the most biggest fan of yours hi prajwal thank you i want your opinion on the rc200 well it's pretty similar to the 390 except for the tires abs and the somewhat heating issues which you will face uh if you want detailed information about the RC200 and a proper review on it head over to Simon says ride now his channel has he has an RC200 so he'd be in a better position to give you a ownership review i guess of the RC200 okay kalpesh kumar yadav says hi ogi i recently started watching your videos and have enjoyed it just want to say keep up the good work and hope to see you hope to see many more amazing videos from you thank you kalpesh Thank you for the encouragement. Bengaluru Rider, what's up, Bengaluru Rider? Any plans for subscriber meetup for your fans? I know you will never do it, but just a thought. Bengaluru Rider, don't you feel silly now after what I posted on Instagram? So I will be doing a ride uh, this coming weekend, and when I'm back from that ride is when I'll plan my subscriber meetup properly. But it is going to happen. Okay, next question is from Nishant Jawalkar. He says, "A stars TGP." R W P is the jacket that you use. Where did you buy this product from, and the price of it as well? Um, well, it's it is the A, A Stars uh, Alpine Stars T G P uh, R Air, I think. But it's not the waterproof one. Um, it's the regular one. It's the mesh one, and I bought it from Planet D S G in Juhu. I think they sell it online as well. I don't think that particular color is available, but they've got some other colors available in it. Okay, Arvind P asks, "What is your opinion on the Apache RTR 180 ABS?" I am planning to go uh, on a 500 km ride. Just want to know what do you think about the bike if possible? Reply. Um I think the Apache RTR 180 is one of the better bikes coming out of the TVS table. And um if you want again a review on it, um speak with or check with uh, SP3 rides. He's featured in in a couple of my videos as well. Uh, he owns an Apache, and he probably would be one of the better person to ask about that. But it is a nice bike, and I don't see any problem in doing a 500 kilometer ride on it. Uh, Arun Kumar Nayak asks, from my side, it was a very serious question that why you didn't, okay, why have you not met up with Nikhil, Mumbai ka Nikhil? Uh, it has been a long time. You did not meet him. What's happened? and needed answer to this well um i think both nikhil and i have been pretty busy with our channels and and what we do um please don't misunderstand uh, the fact that we haven't ha- had that um live vlog uh, q&a session which we were supposed to have uh, it doesn't mean that we're enemies we're still friends we're still very much in touch it's just that we really don't get the time to do a dual vlog um when he's back from his k2k ride we can probably plan something out and and see how that works but There's no animosity between us. We're still friends. Don't spread rumors. Don't spread rumors. Okay, Petrolhead seven o seven has asked the next question. 
He says, I respect the fact that you would wish to keep your personal life away, although I'd like to know about your professional life as to what you do apart from motor vlogging. Just the occupation, not the details. When do you plan to visit Pune? Uh, currently, uh, Petrol Head 707. I work in vendor management. Previously, I used to work as a trainer. And about uh, when would I be coming to Pune? Well, I've been to Pune a couple of times. Uh, I think for Motor Day 2015 and 2016, I came over there. So yeah, I've been to Pune. Maybe next Motor Day is when I'll be in Pune, I guess. Or probably a subscriber meetup, you never know. Okay, next question is from Shams Cristiano. I hope you are a Real Madrid fan, Shams. Uh, how much does your GoPro cost and from where did you get the grip? I think you're talking about the handlebar grips. Okay, so the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition, which I use, costed about 41 to 45,000. I can't really remember when it was new. Uh, the GoPro Hero 2, which I bought, I got for, for about 16,000 or so a few years ago. So that's the GoPro costs. Uh, where did I get the handlebar grips? I got it from a store called the Moto Collective Store. You can search them on, on Facebook under Garage 52. Uh, the store, I think, is closed right now, but they, they still have some stock left over, so you can check them out. Deval asks, how's the controlling of the RC390? It is brilliant. Um, I said it before, it's better than the R15, at least that's my personal opinion. But it's a, it's a very nice motorcycle in terms of handling. Okay, next question is from Abhi Rocks In. Which Bluetooth mic you use if not the traditional GoPro wired mic setup? Well, in the reins right now I'm using the Sina, so you see this SMH10, that's a Sina SMH10 unit, and I was using the boom mic with it, I've now used the, a regular wired mic with it. I know the audio hasn't been great, but I'm working on that now. Rijul Gupti has asked a very stalker-like question, at what time of the day do you normally come out and ride? Well. Um, I usually work from about uh, 3 in the afternoon to midnight, so I'll be riding probably at around 2 o'clock or so. 2 o'clock in the afternoon, that is. Uh, Pratik Shah has asked, uh, you play football, uh, I had seen the vlog related to that, and I think you are playing really well, okay, thank you. Which club are you playing from, and where is it located? Um, well, I play for three different teams, so I play for our corporate football team at work, I play for a local team in Bandra during the Bandra League which we have over here and I also play in the Maharashtra District Football Association League as well. Uh, we are in the first division this year. So yeah, I play football all over. So I can't really name one club because I'll be giving out too much information. But yeah, I play a lot of football throughout the year. Okay, next question is from Murtaza Golwala. Hello there, I'm a big fan of yours. My question is please tell me your review about the Royal Enfield Himalayan. I really love the bike. I'm going to get it on my 18th birthday, but I wanted to ask you your views about the bike. I had asked the same question in an Instagram post of yours. Thank you. I'm sorry, firstly, that I didn't answer your question in the Instagram post. I try to respond as much as I can to those questions. But obviously, I, I don't end up answering all the questions. Um, about the Royal Enfield Himalayan, I think it's a, it's a very nice motorcycle. Like I said, Adventure Tourers is the next step for, for motorcyclists in India, considering the bad road conditions we have. And considering that most of us now want to be exploring and touring a lot more. Um, there's a very special connection I have with that bike and you guys will come to know about that in the next few months. Probably two months or two and a half months or so. Stay tuned for that. But yeah, I think it's a, it's a good bike. Okay, next question is from Syed Afridi. He says, brother, I am going to purchase the KTM RC390 and I'm thinking about the mileage. Please tell me the mileage and long-term ownership. Uh, mileage, I get about uh, 23 to 24 kilometers per liter in the city and about 28 on the highways or so. That was at least when I was doing Goa. But yeah, that's pretty much for the mileage. Uh, about the long-term ownership, I'll be making a separate video once I complete one year with Rage. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so next one's from Bhuvan Sharma. He says, hey bro, really you and Nikhil have hooked me to YouTube and I simply love your videos. My question is related to vlogging plus personal. How difficult is it for you to switch off the vlogger mode when traveling with your family and friends? Or is it hard to do that? Uh, for me, it's really not that difficult considering I don't do a lot of vlogs. But uh, if you've seen most of my videos, I really don't vlog when I'm around my friends and, and family. So that might change in the future, but right now it really doesn't affect me. And I don't really have to switch between modes because I'm pretty much the same person around them. I think, and, and that's another tip for any of you motor vloggers or YouTubers out there. 
I think it's better that you be yourself, both on camera and off camera, because you wouldn't want a subscriber to meet you and and think you're someone really different from the person they they watch on YouTube. So, be who you are, and if people like you, they like you. If they don't, then you got memories uploaded on YouTube at least. Okay, Abhijit asks the next question. He says, when you went for Goa, to Goa, did you get pain in your wrists and back due to the RC? Um, no, I did not. Fortunately, I had the ride on air uh, seat cushion, which was delivered to me uh, a few days before I I went to Goa. That sort of took care of a lot of problems which would have otherwise come up during that ride. But uh, wrists and back, no, I didn't face any issues with my wrist and back. I think this is a certain way to sit on a motorcycle like the RC 390. If you grip the tank with your thighs, you'll automatically notice that it takes away most of the stress from your wrist, your back, your shoulders, and so on and so forth. Uh, the only part of my body which did pain though were my knees, and that was because of the uh, foot pegs being so uh, rear set as they are, so, and, and that's what ca- kind of caused a little pain. But a few stops in between made sure that that was sorted out. Manoj B asks, how much would it cost to get a proper set of instruments for vlogging? I think he meant vlogging, like a GoPro, mic, Bluetooth. What all do you use while vlogging? A uh, basic setup for vlogging is your camera. and your microphone it then comes down to your editing so to start off with i wouldn't really ask you to invest a lot of money into uh, motor vlogging or your camera setup at least uh, get familiar with the basics of editing understand what kind of content your audience likes watching and then slowly start to upgrade from there onwards when you know you want to be doing that and you're interested in going further and further with it azim asks me how could you afford a 3 lakh bucks ride well I couldn't. That's why I got the RC three ninety. No, I'm just kidding. The RC three ninety when I bought it was around two lakhs forty three thousand on road. Pavan Shinde three one one zero asks, where do you service your motorcycle? Well, I trust the guys at KTM in Andheri in Sakhi Naka, um, Mohit's uh, KTM showroom. So it's it's a dealership and a service center as well. Those guys do a brilliant job in the motorcycle, so I trust them. Salman MD says, you're awesome, smiley face. Well. Can I have something in my pocket for you? Yes, here's, here's some awesomeness for you. Gunal Rajput asks, "How tall are you, Augie? I am five foot ten, five foot eleven if I spike my hair, but five foot ten otherwise." Okay, next question is from Ashwin Kumar. How much kilometers have you done with Rage? Um, I think last I checked, it was around sixteen uh, thousand kilometers. Average time you spend for motor vlogging for a week? Um, I really. Can't put a number to that because it depends whether I've got content to edit or not. But usually when I get back home, I'd probably sit down on the computer for about an hour or so every day, and run a few edits, um, and also probably observe how other motor vloggers around the world are um, showing their content. And maybe not just motor vloggers; it could be other YouTube channels as well. Aman Haider says, "I want to learn cornering. Can you suggest me the gear I should use?" Um, Well, it's good that you want to learn cornering. First things first, make sure that you're learning on a track in a controlled environment. We don't want to be doing that on the streets, especially with the kind of road conditions and the fools we've got on our roads over here. I remember the saying: "Protect what you want to keep." So I'd recommend you getting as much of protection as you can: uh, a full leather race suit, proper riding boots, uh, proper gloves, gauntlet gloves probably, and uh, a nice helmet. And that doesn't necessarily mean expensive but um, a helmet which has a good rating plain and simple okay next question is from ashutosh and he says hello ogf which helmet and navigation app do you use um well i use an icon airframe that's what this is it was originally a black helmet a completely black helmet but i got this graphic kind of put onto it um a navigation app i usually use uh, google maps but that's rubbish like we all know uh, i think nokia maps is a nokia year maps i think nitin mbb recommended that one i think that's a better app especially considering you when you ride through places which don't have a proper data connection the, it it has an offline map feature which lets you download the map and follows you throughout the course so it's a better map to be using rohit kumar do you play cs go um, no i don't play cs go but i'm pretty sure someone's using my name and <laughs> playing cs go cuz 
I've been getting a lot of these questions lately. Pratik Dalvi, where are you living? I'm living at home, which is in Bandra West, Mumbai. Okay, Mushtaq has the next question. He says, me as a student have one question in mind. Where did you do your schooling and graduation from? Well, I studied in St. Aloysius High School in Bandra and I graduated uh, from St. Andrew's College, which is also in Bandra. So I'm a pure Bandra bugger. Ethan, hey Ethan. So Ethan asks, so what was your best and worst experience while touring? Best experience, I, I shared uh, the, the road back from, from Motorday in Lavasa. Worst experience, I think when we were riding to Goa, this is just after uh, India Bike Week when I went to Goa again with a few friends. Um, there was this um, elderly gentleman, let's call him that, who was riding probably a 100cc motorcycle, who wasn't wearing a helmet, crashed into the divider, and just flew over and fell into um, a sewage drain over there. And um, that was a pretty bad sight. We went over to check on him and he had already moved on. Uh, the ambulance and locals arrived on the scene pretty quickly, so we really didn't have to do much over there. We, we moved on with our journey, but that was probably the worst experience I've had, seeing someone kind of pass away in front of your eyes. Sahil says, bro, I love Hero Haster 620. What's your opinion on it? Should I buy it? Well, you should, but I hope they launch it soon. It's a nice bike. Seems like a nice bike, but we'll know when it launches. Sai Anivesh asks, what is the most scariest moment of your life? Well, I share a lot of ghost stories, so seeing a ghost was probably the scariest moment of my life. Um, I'll probably share ghost stories in another vlog. If you guys want to hear that, comment. Comment below. Vincent D'Souza says, can we meet again? I mean, for a much more sorted conversation. Uh, hashtag heartbroken rider. Yep. Certainly, just, just hang around at KFC and I'm sure we'll bump into each other. Okay, Niraj asks, how should we convince our parents that we are going for a ride? Parents always say no to riding. So how do we convince them? And this is a question I get a lot, so I'm going to take a bit of time to answer this. As much as I hate to say it, I don't know you personally, but if your parents aren't really comfortable with you riding a motorcycle, then that's probably in your best interest. Maybe you've done, and I don't want to point fingers, but maybe you've done something to show them that you're a bit irresponsible when it comes to that. And you probably want to take time to, to change that impression which they have of you. Uh, again, there's no advice which I can give you which can be a sure shot success because your parents are different from mine. Uh, your behavior probably would have been different from mine. And maybe something somewhere has, has caused that kind of fear to arise in their mind. It could also be that your parents, as when they were younger or even recently, have probably seen a lot of accidents take place with motorcycles. And I know people just wait to share those kind of images on WhatsApp and on Facebook and stuff, so that really doesn't help our cause either. Um, the only thing, the only advice I can give you is prove to them that you're responsible, that you're sensible when you're on the road. And I think maybe then they'd probably be a little more comfortable with the idea of you riding. But like I said, like there's no sure short answer I can give you to that. I don't know your parents. Gamers Rock 88 asks, your thoughts on the Royal Enfield Continental GT? Um, it's a good looking bike. I wouldn't buy it though. I, I did my first vlog on the Continental GT, took about four left turns on it and didn't really like how it, it handled. But I think it's made for a different um, target audience and they love, they seem to love it. So, Okay, Quick Cart Unboxing has asked, what is the secret nowadays that you post or put funny and weird pictures while motor vlogging? Although it's too much entertaining, or oh, it's very entertaining, just curious to know about it. Well. Um, I've been getting mixed feedback about the memes which I've been putting on my videos. Some people seem to like it, some people say, seem to hate it. But I want you guys to comment in the comment section, uh, sharing your thoughts around it. Do you like it? Do you not? And accordingly, I can change it around. That's that's valuable feedback. Thank you. Um, well, I, I, I share a lot of memes with my friends and family as well. We pretty much speak in memes most of the time. So that's where the memes came through. So, and I think I consider you guys as my friends, so I decided to share some memes with you. Himanshu has asked, I know you've answered this before, but I really can't find in which video it was. What's the main use of those small circular mirrors? Well, Himanshu, the main use of those small circular mirrors is that you can pretty much see what's to your side as well when you're riding and not just behind you. Um, and that helps when you're changing lanes or you're planning on overtaking. It keeps you prepared about what you can expect besides you and saves you from having to keep on head checking every now and then to see 
who's beside you. Saves you that time. Ralston. Hey, Ralston. He says, Hey, Augie F, what's your take on the new traffic violation penalties in Mumbai? Will this be enough or much harsher laws needed to be implemented? Well, the only thing that's changed is the amount of money which you have to pay for, for each violation. In my mind, I don't think that really helps the system because uh, it just means that the corrupt traffic police are going to get a little more money out of you than what they were getting before because that margin has now kind of increased. Uh, in my opinion, what needs to be done is a lot of uh, automation needs to be introduced. You need to have cameras all over the place, which I know there are, but probably not the right kind of technology is being used. And uh, maybe the way fines are imposed needs to be a little more automated than you taking out money and giving a, a cop and them giving you a receipt. I don't think that's the best way forward. Automation is the way to go. Okay, the last question which I'm going to answer for this vlog is from Ajit. He says, I'm a 100% traffic rules follower. Very good for you, Ajit. At the same time, I want other guys in the road to follow the rules. What happens if I start telling people to obey with rules? It will end up with quarreling or road rage only. Which is kind of true. Tell me how to make people obedient and following traffic rules without involving road rage. Well, uh, Ajit, there's no foolproof formula, but humans tend to mirror the kind of emotion which they receive. So if you are rude with a person in your approach, they'll probably be rude to you as well. I think the best uh, thing to do would be to approach them in a humble and polite manner with a calm tone versus screaming at them and abusing them. And you'll notice that they're a little more receptive to that. If they're not, you can just flip them off and move ahead. Uh, but a very important um, tip for you, so to speak, is to not kind of uh, have interactions with them when you're both moving because a car versus a bike we are, we're always going to come out second best uh, my advice to you would be to probably speak to these people when they are parked at signals and probably be in such a position that in case things go bad you can just avoid it and, and move on so that, that's what I'd recommend to you to avoid road rage okay so that's it for this time's Q&A this is the first of probably two or three parts depending on how many questions I get to answer in the next uh, Q&A session. Um, if you like the answers, if you agreed with my opinion, go ahead and hit that like button. If you didn't, go ahead and comment. It'll help me with my future answers. Uh, if you haven't already and this is your first time over here, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Thank you again for watching this video and as always, please wear your safety gear, at least your helmet and ride safe. It's a freaking jungle out there. Good bye.